enjoyable game of the weekend, if I'm honest. You know, tough contest up against Royal Bedford in the cup. And we started, started reasonably well. First five minutes, we looked bright. We looked at the races, um, scored early, and, and from a clever bit of play down, down and around the outside, Kelvin's been clever enough to show and just let it slip beyond him and Webby in off the shoulder as he does really well. And it was a, it was a cute enough finish under pressure. And then after that, we, we got to see the, the pedigree of Royal Bedford. Uh, and their front three were, from the position I was sat, having to watch the game from the sideline due to injury, uh, they were a joy to watch, in all fairness. Two of those, we, we had a little dabble in at pre-season and were well out of the market, but they were enjoyable to watch and they were good value. Their, their aggressiveness in the press, their ability to go past players and, and look after the ball at speed was, was impressive. And, and they caused us a number of problems, albeit we, we caused ourselves one or two problems. The, the difference was is Royal Bedford had the ability and the pedigree to capitalise on the errors. And, and that's the difference. You know, you, you come up against step five teams and you know, there's chances and opportunities that are created due to mistakes and they're not quite taken. But when you look at players who, are, who have come through academy environments and, and come from a good pedigree, they've got the, the edge to, to really capitalise on those errors. And, and Real Bidford did exactly that. You know, my arm made is so light underfoot, he was able to, to skin our fullback and our centre half once or twice with ease and it, it, was, it was frightening to watch at times, watching players scramble to try and recover. And he cut the ball back quite nicely for Ben Stevens to pop up and, and ultimately get himself a hat-trick off the back of the day. You know, Ben Stevens has, has come from an academy system along with Charlie Smith and, and Brett Longdon and a, and a handful of others. And uh, they, had, they had pedigree in abundance, especially at this level. And you have to applaud them for, for that. You have to applaud Rob in terms of how he's put that side together. He's got a reasonably young, athletic group who play really good football. And unfortunately on the day, we weren't able to get close enough to them. We didn't put them under enough pressure. We didn't cause them disrupt and cause their midfield trouble to try and make errors so we could counter and, and transition towards their goal. Albeit when we did put their defence under pressure, you know, we got one or two chances, but they dominated the ball and they, they, they played, played around and through us with such ease. You know, when players have, have come through academy systems and, you know, to, to Joe's detriment, he's coached three or four of those for an extended period whilst he was in the academy, he knew what was coming. He knew what we were up against and it was a challenge. We look back to Dunstable Town last year, we come up against a similar challenge in, in Enfield in the FA Vars and at that day we were prepared and we had the, the defensive nows and, and tactical understanding to, to hold them off and nick a 1-0 win. You know, and, and that was a big occasion for Dunstable Town. Big turnout for the fan base, evening kickoff, and it was enjoyable. Saturday's game just gone, I don't believe we rose to that occasion. We, we, we sputtered and, and spited at the start, but Royal Bedford took charge and, and they took charge with their class. So, you know, you have to applaud what they put together there. You have to applaud the individuals that, that are technically leagues ahead of the level and, and leagues ahead of some of the individuals that we have to work with and the majority of individuals at this level. You have to appreciate, you know, the high standards and ability that those individuals have. And, you know, it, that comes from, you know, lots and lots of contact time through the youth development phase and, and it, it showed at times. Albeit we'd have liked to be more competitive, you know, out of possession, putting people under pressure, you know, trying to lay a glove on someone at times to disrupt and, and spoil what they're up to. But we weren't able to get close enough to disrupt Real Bedford and, you know, six was potentially flattering for us, if I'm honest. Connor's made some outstanding saves on a number of occasions to keep the scoreline down. You know, they create a number of good opportunities in and around the box. You know, most goals we see at this level are from set pieces and Real Bedford didn't put one cross into the box from a set piece. They built short, they wanted to play. Is that because, you know, they, the, the size of their group, you know, they're not the biggest of groups or is that because they are truly believe in their ability to play football? And they, and they tested that and it was good value. It was good value and you've got to applaud it. I almost sound like I was a fan of them, but you know, as a coach, you've got to recognise when, when you're up against it and you're truly beat. And in fairness to Royal Bedford, we were. So as a, from a coaching perspective, you've got to applaud what the opposition delivered on the day. Um, and from our perspective, it's about how we regroup. You know, there's, there's two complaints from, from us as a management team on the day. It's the scoreline, quite obviously. No one wants to get beat 6-1. That's, that's never nice. And in addition, it, you know, looking at the individuals within our group and, you know, the output that they offered in terms of out of possession, we would like to see more. One or two of the lads didn't do enough, didn't run hard enough, and that's detrimental to them. For us, it's we get to see it and we have to address it, but off the back of you know, the, the fixture, those are the only two things we take away in a negative light. The rest of it for us has to be positive. It's an opportunity to 
you know, roll out the style of play that we're looking to adapt to moving forward. It was an opportunity to look at some players from our perspective, but cup game is a cup game. At least we've seen their hand because we have to play them twice in the league, and that is potentially six points that we would like to at least scrape a couple off of Real Bedford to see if that can help us in the league push. So at squad update, we've got a number of players returning from injury and we're going to put them through their paces this evening to see how physically robust they are and if they can get through a full session then they'll have the opportunity to make the squad for the weekend. But until they go through a robust training session and they get through in good health, um, we'll have to review where they stand, is that another week away, another, another seven days of recovery and rehab or whether they're in a position that they can feature at the weekend, whether off the bench or within the starting group, depending on how well they do this evening. But look, we, we need players to come back into the group. We've got uh, some sad news regarding Benji Crilly, who's a huge influence on Dunstable Town and the players and staff, who's out for the season now with a knee injury, which is just another devastation. He, he, can, add, he can be added to the list of players that we've uh, lost this year due to no fault of their own necessarily. You know, Davo out from start of the season, injured, gone, Crilly, has, was injured, has come back and is now back out again. So in terms of the ability to get your best players and, and your most influential players on the pitch, we, we found that hard this year. But we've got one or two uh, players in and around returning, or should I say three, in, three additions if I'm honest, in and around returning. So we're looking forward to putting them through their paces tonight. I hope they've worked hard away from Dunstable Town to, to do their rehab, to get their runs in, and to come in with the best opportunity to feature at the weekend if it's appropriate for them. Saturday we head over along with the Dunstable Faithful to Arlesey and I'm sure we'll be supported in great numbers when we go over there. Saturday just gone was a really important weekend for Dunstable Town and, and Ian Bateman and the family regarding the death of his son two years ago. That was an important Saturday for the club, the community and us as a playing staff and management team. So we hope to take some of that energy and that positive enthusiasm that, that Ian had for all of us off the back of the game Saturday and take that with us into the Saturday coming. We've got to use moments like that and, and fantastic people like that to, to give us that extra 10% because it means more than just a game of football. It, it means the world to some people and that support is so well and truly endowed that we need to utilise that as a strength to give us the impetus of what it looks like on Saturday. Obviously have had a, a management change um, and they've got some, some new gentlemen in the building, albeit young and, and players themselves, or player managers as it were. You know, they've, they've recruited a new group, shall I say, with, whilst keeping a handful of individuals. So it'll be an interesting fixture, not, not too much about them in terms of what we know and what, we, what to expect, but we do know what that environment looks like in terms of the pitch. We've been over to Alzey numerous times, whether it's to play Alzey or Bulldog, uh, and it's a difficult place to go, it's a difficult pitch. If you can play football on that, you've done really well because the bobbles and the bounces and the, and the muck is uh, vast over at Alzey Town. But I look forward to going over there, I look forward to seeing what they offer in terms of a new challenge. But they're not running far away as we are. You know, there shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a huge, huge test, but at this moment in time, the biggest challenge Dunstable Town has is Dunstable Town, because on our day, we can do damage. At this moment in time, we're not quite huffing and puffing like we should be. So we'll see. Saturday be interesting, opportunity to go and inflict our style on another opposition, and hopefully the plan is, as always, find a way to win and come away with three points.